Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of this series about Modulo. I am David Nini from Politecnico di Bari and I will guide you through some hands-on sessions. Specifically, this second part of the course is divided into five videos. In this first video, I will give you a general overview of the software and I will explain how to import your data. In the next videos, we will focus on the POD, DFT and MPOD and finally, we will close with a video dedicated to the memory saving. Let's start. Let's start from the installation of the executable. We can run the installer. Don't worry if it is slow, it is normal. Maybe I will cut the parts of the video in which the installation is too slow. Here we can click on yes. Okay. Here we can click on next, we add a shortcut to the desktop, next, next one more time and install. Installation completed, so we can click on finish and close this window. It is strongly suggested to put the executable in a folder on the desktop because Modulo will create different uh, temporary files during the decomposition. For example, I have created this folder, testing Modulo, in which I will find my data folder and in which I will put my executable. So I can delete this from the desktop and we are now ready to run Modulo. Run Modulo as administrator because you will need the permissions for the creation of the results file. As before, don't worry if at the first launch especially it is slow. Ok, here we go. Running Modulo, this window will appear. This is the main menu. You can notice that it is minimal. You can only edit the string of the exporting folder. For example, it can be done manually or we can select an exporting folder through the menu export. Select folder. We can choose, for example, our folder on the desktop testing modulo and then we can add a slash to select another folder. For example, test1. Even if this folder does not exist, modulo will create it. This should be the first task that you should do, otherwise you cannot proceed. At this stage we can import data, through the menu Import Data. Before importing them, we can decide to activate uh, the option Remove Min Flow. This option removes the temporal average in each of the spatial points, an operation which is interesting if the dataset is statistically developed. This is also known as Min Centering. The influence of mean centering depends on the decomposition. For example, for the DFT, as we will see, this is only a matter of plotting. For POD and MPOD, however, this operation can influence the structures of the modes. Then we can choose between a 1D test case or a 2D test case. Soon we'll also implement the possibility of importing 3D test cases. You can notice that by choosing a 2D test case, we can select for a scalar or a vector of two components. In a 1D test case, the quantity will be, of course, a scalar. An example of a 2D scalar test case is the analysis of the vorticity. An example of a vector is the velocity field in a PIB. That is the case of this video tutorial. When choosing a test case, you will be asked to select a format file. We can choose between separated mesh format file and embedded mesh format file. Let me close this to explain you the difference between them. An example of a separated mesh format file is the one of the vorticity, in which the mesh is printed in one unique separated file. And for each time step we have the values of the vorticity in other files. The case of the TRPIV presents an embedded mesh format file in which the mesh is printed together with the velocity field, so 
we have for each time step the values of the x, the values of the y, and the values of the horizontal and the vertical component. So let's go back. We already said that we want to import a vectorial test case. And let's choose an embedded mesh format file. Notice that we may change the extension of the files. We may choose between .txt and .csv. Be sure that uh, in importing data, you don't select hidden or temporary files, for example, created by an USB device. So we can select all of them. As soon as we select the files, the value of NT is updated. These are the time steps, so the amount of the files that we have selected. And then this window automatically appears on desktop. Through this panel, we can set the region of interest. For now, let's forget about the memory saving that will be explained in a dedicated video. In this panel, we can surf through the time steps, so we can plot each snapshot at different time, and then we can also set other parameters. For example, here on the left, only for a 2D vector test case, we can set uh, delta x, delta y, and scale to readapt the velocity field in the plot. We also have the possibility of flipping the axis and we can also modify the aspect ratio of the plot in order to have the same measure of the x-axis and the y-axis. The color bar on the right gives the value of the quantity that in this case is the magnitude of the velocity, so meter per second, but however Units are never specified in modulo because it is assumed that uh, these are specified in the dataset. Then we can set the region of interest. The philosophy is that we can limit the analysis to a specific part of the domain. By default, it is the entire domain, but we can modify the values of x left, x right, y down, and y up. For example, if I put here 5, then a red rectangular will help me identifying uh, uh, the region in which uh, I'm going to perform the decomposition. Now let's suppose that uh, we have modified the region of interest and other parameters, but we don't remember the default values. We can click on the reset button and everything will go back to the initial values. Once we have finished, we can click on done and Modulo will create the data matrix D, a weight bar will indicate the progress of the construction, as we can also see in the console. Now I will cut this part of the video. Ok, D has been created. Notice that uh, only when we have set the region of interest, the values of an X and NY and so also NS are updated. Now we would be ready to perform a decomposition, but in this video we will continue the overview of Modulo. From when you process, we can run a specific method and basically this will be the last step before performing a decomposition. Before doing this, we can choose what plots will be exported. From the menu export, we can select Sigma, Phi and Psi or only some of them. For example, in this case, I would plot only sigma and phi. In the menu Help, you will find the memory information useful for the memory saving that, as I said before, will be explained in the next video tutorial, and also the information about the software, with the email addresses for reporting bugs of Modulo. So, I hope that you liked this video, you have learned how to import and prepare your data to perform a decomposition. In the next video tutorial, we will perform the POD. So, see you in the next video.